political party manifestos, Gammon Bites, Jurgen Klopp and Scouse Tears, marketing as a brand rather than a product? What do all those things have in common? Find out in today's episode of The Print Pod. Sam the Builder. Hello, Sam. Welcome to The Print Pod. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for coming all the way over from Ireland to see us today. First of all, tell us a little bit about what you do yep. for, a, for a day job. Yep, no worries. Um, so I work on the builder team. So the builder team is essentially a web to print platform that allows people to go on, build, design and order their flexible packaging, digitally printed. Um, I'm also the marketing manager for Sealed Air for Europe. So that means that I am doing a lot of different marketing activities for them, uh, typically relating to digital printing and digital printing customers. So dealing a lot with um, brands themselves. An exciting time to be in packaging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so talk to us a little bit about um, um, the structure of the company, how it, how it's all formed, where, yeah. where Builder fits. Yeah, sure. So I initially worked for Foxpack, who are um, famously or unfamously known to be one of the first um, printed packaging, so printed flexible packaging companies to print digitally using HP Indigo technology in the world. Wow. Yeah, so it was pretty much a beta site in Do they get the medal or a trophy for that or something? I don't know. I think we're going to have to get on <laughs> HP for that. Um, so essentially, that company was bought by Sealed Air about three years ago. Um, so Sealed Air are a global packaging company. Um, they have multiple different um, brands under there. Yep. Um, Cryovac being one that's like meat packaging mainly. Um, then they have protective sides. So they were the inventors of bubble wrap. Yeah. Wow. Fun fact, it was meant wow. to be a wallpaper initially. Really? <laughs> yeah. My yeah. kids love the bubble wrap. Yeah. Yeah. It's wow. good. So Sealed Air bought Foxpack. Um, after a year then, we decided to introduce Builder. So Builder is essentially a, I suppose, open source web to print um, solution where anyone can go online um, anyone that has a business or a brand can go online and design by their packaging. Um, so the idea behind that was to try and reach out to some of these smaller brands um, and kind of help them along the way of getting to the point of packaging. So through the years of working with Foxpack and dealing with the kind of brands from, from all sizes, but the nature of digital print, they bring the smaller um, brands to you so startup or SMEs um, just typically because of the nature of low MOQs it's a quick route to market and um, so what we found is that a lot of the time these brands kind of come to us at the point of packaging so they've developed their product and they understand they have a marketing strategy mm. and all this kind of stuff um, and they get to us at the point of packaging and it's, it's nearly like packaging is an afterthought and that kind of brings up some issues for them Whereas we found that really we can have touch points with these brands at a lot of different places earlier on. Mm. Um, so during the development phase. And what we can do is offer them services um, alongside the packaging. So that complement the packaging and um, things like prototyping, market feedback okay. um, different things like that, that really help them to speed up, first of all, and de-risk their development process. So give them a way to test the market before committing to full product, full yeah, production yeah. packaging um, so that they can launch into market with the best chance of success, really. Because okay. essentially, if they're successful and grow, we're successful and grow. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense, right? Yeah. So, so would you say with those um, uh, auxiliary or supporting services, should we say, that you offer around and also the, the different stages that businesses are at, you're kind of a one-stop shop for a packaging project PSP someone that yeah. wants to get off the ground um, and how far do you take that relationship so you said that you um, will offer sort of design services mm -hmm. is that right as yeah. well how far do you go do you go into marketing as well do you go into helping them guide them in, in terms of getting it to market or yeah so essentially what we can do is I think the development the product development stage there's there's conception so coming up with the idea at that stage what we can do is we can use 3d prototypes to help them visualize a concept and um, we can use market feedback to get uh, actual real-time data from real consumers and um, 
on what they think the concept is like or whether they like the product idea, whether they feel there's a need for that idea in the market, whether they would buy it or not. Yeah. Um, then when you get into like the development and testing phases, yeah. again, we can help with all of those things, yeah. with design work, with prototyping, with market feedback. Um, then when you get to launch, we obviously offer the, the prototypes, so physical ones that you can hold in your hand. You can get from 1 to 20 if you want to. Um, they're really helpful. And it really is, it's not dependent on the size of the brand. So for example, when you talk about uh, helping them with marketing you can get a large fmcg consumer or a brand that wants to run a campaign um like a a reactive marketing campaign okay digital print web to print that kind of quick solution yes is is a really great solution for them because obviously they want to run this campaign maybe for six weeks they don't want to be sitting with loads of stock in their warehouse no. for that campaign that they ran back in January. Yeah, sure. That has to be written off by someone at the end of the year. And it's, it's costly. <laughs> yeah, costly, unsustainable. Yeah, yeah. So um, it definitely does help brands of all sizes, um, not just when it comes to production, but also when it comes to marketing as well. Okay, so you mentioned... Um, you mentioned HP, who are a partner of, of Invigos. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I say obviously, of course, the, the big news here is that you're using Infigo's platform for Builder, yeah. which is pretty exciting. Yeah. You also connect with one of our other partners, Tharston. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for the MIS. Mm -hmm. um, you use another partner of Infigo's called Infocus. Yeah. Um, quite a family affair, this, which mm. is fantastic. Um we touched on the marketing. Uh, that's for me uh, the, the big attraction for wanted to talk to you today was the way that you guys approach your own marketing yeah. with Builder. I've got three campaigns I'd like to talk to you about yeah. or, or get more information on. I'm going to start with um, the most recent. I think it's the most recent, mm. so I apologize if it's not. You put together a what looked like a fake manifesto <laughs> for the election. I'm assuming that was for the British election yes. as well. Yeah. Tell me a bit about that. Yeah, so from consumer feedback, like what, what we find talking to the brands that we work with, customization and packaging is really, really important to them. So we wanted to kind of bring that and, and play on that. So what's more customizable than a political manifesto? <laughs> so essentially... Well, it depends yeah, which side. <laughs> essentially, we want to kind of democratize packaging. Um, everything is consumer-led these days. Brands are aware of that. So mm -hmm. the things that they want to do, take sustainability, for example. I know it's government-led as well, but essentially it is consumer-led. So if mm -hmm. consumers want recyclable packaging and that's a reason why they would choose your brand over another one, you're going to go with that. So we wanted to take our... <laughs> liberal demo packs out to, <laughs> out to the consumers yeah, and it. give them a voice and, and let them tell us exactly what they want because yeah. with Builder that's what we do with brands we let them have exactly what they want okay so your liberal demo packs <laughs> um, constituents they hit the streets was yes. that right yeah. okay, t t tell me a bit about that yeah so they went out to um, Blackpool um, and they were out on, on the streets and essentially we had our, our head of the, the political party out with a stand up pouch costume on him and we let the the public write what they wanted onto him what simple they wanted to see yeah simple yeah. as that okay we got a lot of very fun very fun um very fun answers from people and it's interesting that you you've identified um the need for personalization and um you know this is important now and obviously you've identified that in what you've just said that customers now want <laughs> their packaging to be a certain way yeah um before we go on talk about the other campaigns and things was there a time when you noticed this kick in or is it just something that you've seen gradually or has it happened kind of overnight? I think it's always been there. I think customization is really important to brands. I think um, like packaging is, it's very the same, especially when you think about like materials. Yeah. So you have your format options that you can choose from that would differentiate you. But then there are certain products that fit certain formats. For example, you wouldn't put protein powder into a glass bottle 
because it's, <laughs> it's impractical. So you would you would have the choice of a pouch or a tub, which is the standard kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. So and then when it comes down to materials, there's only certain materials. Some some products are limited by their shelf life requirements. Yeah. Um, so there's only certain materials you can choose from. So then when customization comes into play, it's really about the features. But again, a lot of the time, those are dictated by the end user. Yeah. Um, so um, like convenience is key. So yeah, yeah. having something resealable, if it's more than a single serve pack, is obviously something that people should be opting for. So if everyone has a resealable zipper, it's again, it's not going to help you stand out. Mm. So when it comes to design, then I think that's where people can really bring customization into it. Mm. So I think the reason why we've offered a lot of different options in terms of design on the platform, um, and it's kind of the user experience is design centered. So when you go on, you choose your product, you choose your attributes, and then you have three ways to order it. So you can upload your design, mm -hmm. you can create your design online with the editor, or you can come to us and one of our design experts will help them design it for them. So just um, <clears throat> delving into the detail a bit here, mm. customization, personalization. I think you guys kind of offer both, don't yeah. you? Because I think, if, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody can literally upload whatever they want yeah. Or an image into a template, or you can do it for them. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. there's a fine line between customization and personalization. Yeah. So, customization, I suppose, relies more so on the brand and what they want their pack to look like. So, if they want it to be green instead of blue, or if they want it to have a zip and not a zip, if they want it to be a, a foil material or a recyclable material, um, to me, that would be customization. Personalization then would lean more so on the customer facing side. So things like variable data, where we've run campaigns before with customers where they've launched a product variation and they're sending it out to food influencers and mm -hmm. they've customized the pack with the food influencer's name on it. Nice. And from that, the, the age that we live in, someone gets something cool like that through the post, what do they do? They post it on their social media. Mm. And the amount of earned media that these companies get from it, it's it's amazing. Yeah. They get product placement on radio shows and, and like blogs and things that you would traditionally have to pay for. But because they've introduced something new and yeah. kind of striking into the market where it will make people take a double turn and go oh my name's on this this is mm. really cool it's it's really shown good value for them it's it's um really good to hear you say that it's always been there because we've worked with um general commercial printers mm. who have put sample packs out given free sample packs yeah. of, of printed collateral and they've encouraged the end user to uh, who downloads the the request for a sample pack once it arrives to share it on to instagram and actually that was a, a campaign that bear you know a lot of fruit so yeah. it's interesting that you say that and i think we, you know we can vouch for <clears throat> or should i say pouch <laughs> for um for, for what, those trends and we're seeing that across the label space as well yeah the, the demand is there it's um it's all about how you can change the mindsets to to sort of take it on okay so sticking with um the campaign so that was the uh, manifesto love that idea um hopefully you've got some seats in parliament yeah um <laughs> Gammon bites, is yeah. that correct? Gammon bites. What is um? What was gammon bites? What was it about? And who was it for? So gammon bites was off the back of the Scouse Tears campaign. Which, we'll come on to that in a second. Yeah. <laughs> so essentially, we. Or do you want to go into that first and then lead on? Well, to... we could do. Yeah, yeah let's yeah, go into that. Do, yeah. Scouse Tears. What's yeah. Scouse Tears? So Scouse Tears was a reactive marketing campaign because this is, again, one of the benefits of using digital print. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's very hard to explain a concept like this to someone using just words. Um, and not many brands might be willing to do it to show as an example. So we thought, well, if, if we want to reach our target market and show them that we understand them, we'll just market like them, which okay. is essentially... The reasoning behind our whole marketing approach is that we market like a brand, not like a manufacturer. Um, and and so I just interject yeah. there, but do you find that that strategy is working? I think so. I think it yeah. resonates a lot. Yeah. Um, people can see this is an issue I've always had um, because my my background is marketing and I love brand marketing. Yeah. Um, obviously, I do marketing for a manufacturer. Sure. Um, which is it's it's different and unique and fun in its own way, but really the best part of my job is talking to the brands and showing them what's possible mm. with on pack promotion, printing, that kind of thing. Mm. So what I found troublesome over the years is trying to get these concepts across 
verbally. It's very hard. But when you show an example of a real life in market um, application yeah. of this and yeah. how it's benefited them, then brands can put themselves in those shoes and go, oh, wow, that can work for us as well. Yeah. So essentially, that's what we're doing with Builder. We're trying to show them. And I think all the top packaging brands in, in our space or our conjoined space um, have that same approach with marketing as a brand rather than a production outlet. And I and I can I could name a few. And there's a couple in America. Um, the packaging lab is, mm. is one that we're we're very proud of. And those those guys, you know, got that off the ground, which is a startup. But their marketing campaign is based around the brand. Yeah. And, and you know, there's there's some character, there's some feeling, there's some uh, authenticity about it. And I and I get the same same feeling about um, Builder as yeah. well. And I think actually, if you think about the human beings we tend to understand and grasp a brand better than a concept don't we yeah um so it seems to me like it's not rocket science but actually there's a lot of fruit to be had there yeah definitely okay so um scouse tears then yeah so scouse tears was an example of a reactive marketing campaign so poor el jürgen decided he he wasn't gonna renew his contract and he was heading off um and we so you're a liverpool fan well if, if <laughs> I could sit on the fence here, yeah. we don't have any affiliation for any football team at oh, Builder. Very good, very good. Um, Whoever wants packaging can have packaging. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so Scouse Tears was essentially a reactive marketing campaign. So after a um, few weeks after Jurgen announced that he wasn't coming back as the the Liverpool manager, um, we thought it would be very funny <laughs> to package. Uh, salt water and, <laughs> and hand it out outside um the outside the match um which match uh that's a good question because i think it's a very clever <laughs> fixture you chose I it was argue. man united wasn't it it was man united yeah. at old trafford yeah. on the 7th of april yeah what a vet, what a place to go yeah it was uh i think it was kind of dangerous <laughs> well so let's set the scene here it, it's before the game, and, yeah. and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what stood out to me. It's before the game. It's at Old Trafford. Uh, Jürgen's just obviously publicly announced he's leaving. Yeah. It's, it's one of the fiercest rivalries in the Premier League is yes. Manchester United. And you have what looks like a very, very good Jürgen Klopp lookalike yes. walking around outside at Old Trafford. Yeah. But correct me if I'm wrong, you had him walking through Piccadilly Station at Manchester on a train so he's actually using public transport to get to Old Trafford. Yes. I mean, the risk element, is, but also it's fantastically disruptive, isn't it? It's very disruptive. And that was the point, really, yeah. because that's exactly what people want to do. What brands want to do is to be disruptive. They want yeah. to be noticed. Yeah. They want to be reactive. They want to be relevant. Yeah. And I think we kind of ticked all the boxes with this one. Fantastic. Yeah, it was risky, but it did pay off. And it's we actually put packets of Sky's Tears on sale on our... Saltwater. Yeah. <laughs> On our web to print platform, yeah, oh, really? yeah. So we've wow. moved into the the merchandising space now, <laughs> and we've sold them. Really? We've sold them, yeah, really? yeah. And we, you know what the demographic is of people that purchase the Scouse tears, or I would imagine. Um, well, it's typically males yeah, <laughs> from Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. Um, either from Liverpool or from Manchester who want to taunt their Liverpool <laughs> friends, but. Uh, it's worked out really well. I think it's one of our better known campaigns so yeah, far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so you got you hired Jurgen for that. We did. Yeah, yeah. He's brilliant, by the way. So uh, is Jurgen on the payroll now, or is his, his his work with Builder done? Oh, I don't know. He might come back. He might, he come, might back. come back. We'll yeah. see what happens. See where he goes. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, love that. <laughs> Allow us to interrupt this broadcast with a short ad break. Are you ready to take advantage of the next printing revolution? Access our white paper to find out how web to print has revolutionised the printing industry. Inside, we discuss the growing importance of print e-commerce and automation, whereby customers are increasingly seeking an Amazon-like experience, with businesses that can't provide this being left behind. So how do you take this one step further and put your customers in control? Access the white paper and find out how web to print is revolutionising the printing industry. How customers can find your business online. How you can learn from Amazon's huge success. How to enable your print business to make money while you sleep. The way in which potential customers want to deal with your business has changed. Are you adapting to grow? Download it now at vigo.net 
forward slash white papers. So Scouse Tears, so you, you've you've hired a, a Jurgen Klopp lookalike. Mm -hmm. You had a van. A we did. We did. Yeah. Have a, we had yeah. a digital display going around. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It you, was good. And what was on that? Um, it was the pictures of him with the Scouse Tears and <laughs> <laughs> outside Old Trafford. <laughs> outside Old Trafford. Wow. Yeah. And did you all, as a team, the company, did you all go in? Uh, not the whole that. team. There was there was some people there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Okay. So you were saying that this led on to Gammon Bites, which yeah. is another exciting yeah. campaign. So we we had done, at this stage at the stage of Sky Tears we had done a couple that focused on male football, um, and this one we wanted to switch up and focus on female football. Okay. Um, and with that you have these a term that I only recently learned gammon right <laughs> gammon men yeah. who kind Explain. of explain so uh, from my understanding <laughs> these are men that um, get pretty worked up and wound up about certain social or political issues and mm -hmm. and when they do their face goes red and that's why they call Called them gammon. gammons yeah. Yeah. yeah I should imagine there's a few gammon faces uh, late last night or there could well have been yeah, yeah. after the England result yeah <laughs> but that's, in that, that's shame in that. <laughs> always next time <laughs> I mean you can quite clearly tell this morning who's Spanish who's Irish who's Scottish in the Figo offices um, and I think the Moldovans are staying quiet but mm. um, yes okay so gammon gammon okay I've learnt something today so gammon bites yeah so essentially a, another kind of reactive marketing campaign but really it was more so showing how you would do a non pack campaign around a social issue, I suppose. Okay. So you've got a couple of different elements. So you've got these the gammon men yeah. and you've got the women's football that's that's usually not very um focused upon compared to the men's. I I think I saw something online recently about how this woman loves to get into taxis and talk about, oh, isn't it amazing that England's made it to the Euros twice in two years now? And he's like, no, we haven't, because he doesn't take into account the women's football. Mm. Um, so that that was that was basically Which they a, actually won. They, yeah, they won the just European. To put that yeah, out there, yeah, they did. Just yeah, for the record. Exactly. So yeah, <laughs> we wanted to um, we wanted to kind of highlight that, and again, yeah. it's fun, it's disruptive, yeah. it's. It's interesting. It's on trend. Okay, so Gammon Bites it wasn't a real product. It was no, a, no, it wasn't it was a real a, product. Okay, because no. yeah. I was getting you know salivating at the thought of some yeah. meat product. I know. In a, no. Okay, and um, so you raised a social issue there. Yeah. Um, I guess what's next off the back of all of these because they keep coming thick and fast at the moment, I know. don't they? And we have to see what happens yeah. in the news. We don't know. It's it's a very interesting process. We look at the headlines, we see what we can react to. I wouldn't look at the news. I know, I know. It is. It's, <laughs> it, the world's gone crazy. But as long as it relates to a core belief or a core value yeah. of us and our brands, we're happy to demonstrate how you can use the power of packaging to kind of really yeah, make a difference in the market. So I, I love that. And I think um, we're quite quite aligned in that we believe that you should bring personalization, fun, creativity to mm. any kind of print. Yeah. Whether it's labels, packaging, wide format, corrugated, general commercial, whatever it should be. We were recently in Dusseldorf for Drupa, mm. which was a pack. And we were teaming up with um, mutual friends, HP. Yeah. Um, actually, before we go on to that, you were saying to me earlier on that... Um, that, you know, HP were one of the you were one of the first to put one of their machines in, weren't you? Yeah, so we were the first flexible packaging company in the world to print using HP Indigo technology. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's fantastic. So we we were um, we were bringing some AI um, mm. technology to to packaging and, and labels, and I think that you um, I think you came along because I saw your laptop cover earlier, mm -hmm. and it had a it had a, a label on it that had come off of the six K. Yeah, and you were a superhero. Which superhero were you? I think I, I chose the Infigo superhero. Did you? I think I did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's politically uh, <laughs> done well for you there, hasn't it? Um, but one of the things we found there, we, obviously, we took the AI um, feature where you could change your face and become mm. a superhero, and we would add that to a pouch or add it to a label, and we were just swamped. Yeah. Now, the appetite is there for doing anything like that. Yeah. And the feedback we also received from people at Drupal was, you know, I want to I put my kid's face in it, I want to put my face on it, and I want to keep it. Mm. So some of these people are going to buy this stuff and they're not even going to necessarily open up the product inside. They yeah. just want a pouch full of Scouser's Tears yeah. or something. 
Um, you seeing the same thing, same trend? This definitely. I yep. genuinely, I definitely think so. All you have to think about is the Shero Cook campaign. Yeah. I remember when that came out. Richard which, Askham, we've had him on. Yeah. Yeah. When when that came out, I remember queuing up in my local supermarket to get Sam written on a tiny can, Coke can, and keeping it in my bedroom, and I never opened it. So these are the types of things like it's not it's not just uh, I know obviously you guys used it and it, it wasn't a brand that you were um, focusing on. It yeah. was it was for an event. It was a promotion, yeah. Yeah. which is fair enough. But it's so easy to see how brands can use this as well. And you do not have to have the marketing budget of Coca-Cola to pull yeah. something like this off. It is so easy to do. And the irony is when we were talking to Richard, who, who um, led the UK and Ireland, share a coke can mm. i think it was more than that he did the europe as well but yeah he'll, he'll kill me for getting this wrong i should know this <laughs> but he was you know he was explaining that it it was pre-printed names mm. like it wasn't even personalized or yeah customized it was literally you know we've gone through the phone book in essence and gone with how many sounds we can find in yeah. republic of ireland and we're going to work it on and he, that's that's mad when yeah. you think of it now whereas what we're doing now and i think what you're offering to your customers is taking a picture of yourself manipulating the picture making you into whatever you want to be yeah. and then putting on a product there and then, that changes everything, doesn't it? Yeah. There's so many examples in, of, it's which is, I hate saying this because it's always larger brands that do it. And I don't know why, because you really, really do, do not need the resources yeah. that, that they have behind them. Yes, it helps, but you really do not need to. Like the, the brand I spoke about that personalized their, their crisp packets, yeah. that was a minimum order run of, roll stock yeah all they had to do was provide us a excel csv file with yeah. 40 names on it our pre-press and, and our software done all the rest yeah you just had to say these are the names this is where i want you to put them yeah. and then that was it it was as easy as that yeah. and the amount of the amount of benefit you get from it is amazing and i really 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 wish that more brands would want to do course, it course. because it's fun it's really fun but you're, you're obviously you're raising that flag, and raising that awareness with your marketing campaigns. Mm. So I guess you're, you're, before we go back onto Drupal, your message would be to anyone, you know, a uh, production outfit or, or any kind of printer, think like a brand, market yeah. like a brand so yeah. then people can get the concept of who you are, yeah. buy into what you do yeah. uh, and why you do it. Mm -hmm. And I think also the people are a massive part of, of those brands as yeah. well. And you guys have got some great, great characters in your operation. So Drupal, was it your first or was it your second? My first, first, yeah. Wow, what did you think? It was big, yeah. <laughs> very big, yeah. yeah. It's amazing to see the amount of technology that they can fit in. Like, no wonder it's across two weeks, really. Yeah. Um, it would take you two weeks to go around everything. <laughs> it was amazing. And yeah. It was really fun to see all the new technology coming out, particularly in digital printing. So I was there primarily for for that and then looking as well at like pre-press software and, and different things and um, design softwares and things like that so yeah no so you popped over to see us on i did all 17 which is yeah. great you saw mr greg young um which is fantastic and obviously mm -hmm. proofs in the pudding you've got your label on the back of your laptop <laughs> so you obviously stopped by the one of the kiosks yeah what else were you in drupal for anything particular or was it just research just research really yeah yeah, yeah. it was just very interesting to be there i would definitely go again yeah Okay, and what's any plans for the future? Anything you want to share or? Um, we yeah, so we're finish it, finishing up a phase two developments, I suppose, on our on our platform, um, and kind of at the strategy ideation stages for phase three, which may or may not involve moving into the B two B space. Exciting. So, yeah, Exciting. still to be confirmed. Yeah, and that's the value of a web to print platform. I think you and I were discussing this earlier on today where I was explaining to you that customers that we see that are doing really well mm. using web to print have a mix of B2C and, and B2B as well. And, um, you know, when you've got multiple revenue streams like that, that's when you really uh, can utilize the, the platform. But you guys have got it sorted in the back end as well. You know, yeah. You've got a great workflow. So you could have multiple customers with their storefronts going straight into your workflow but yeah. that's exciting well good luck with that thank you so much for popping over to see us from the emerald isle no worries and uh, you're off to a trade show now are yeah. You? yeah yeah so uh, i'm going down to london to set up for a bread and jam festival so yeah. we'll be there tomorrow bread and, and jam wednesday festival. yeah Bread and Jam Festival. Bread and Jam. Yeah, it's very, very good festival. Very brilliant. Sounds fattening. Uh, I don't know, but I hope <laughs> not. <laughs>
<laughs> no, it's brilliant. It's um, it's basically a food and drink entrepreneurial kind of festival where you can go. Um, there's a lot of suppliers ex- tend to yeah. exhibit at it. So people that can help these smaller pre-startup startup brands um, and entrepreneurs through their journey. So it could be anything from packaging to compliance. Yeah. Um, and they also have a lot of different like seminars and, and things going on, like people talking on different topics like marketing and branding and experts in the field. And they also have a lot of retail buyers that are there as well that you can have the opportunity to pitch to them and okay. potentially win a spot in the retail shelves. She'll be there to help them with their... With their packaging, yeah. Their packaging. Yeah. Well, Sam, enjoy the bread and jam. Um, hopefully you'll find some nice combinations to try yeah. some samples <laughs> um, and thank you so much again and best of luck with yeah. Builder thank you. thank you thank you for joining us today on the Print Pod if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like and consider subscribing to make sure you get all the latest from the world of print and marketing feel free to share what you would like to see in the next episode of the Print Pod in the comments below For more behind the scenes content, don't forget to follow us on our social media channels in the links in the bio below.